All right. I'm recording. Who boy. It's your boy, Mickle. Back at you. I'm gonna talk about Save My Breath. And this time, um, I was editing the, uh, I've already recorded two of these. I come across as very drowsy. So now, uh, I'm gonna be very pep. I'm gonna up the pep. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pep all over your face for this one. So, huh. Ooh, strap in, you're gonna love this. I feel like uh, if Trump were to give me a dumbass nickname, it would be Drowsy Mike, perhaps? I'm just gonna go track by track, touching on all this jazz. Vocals, drums, bass, synths, pads, guitar. That covers it. So let's uh, let's just start with the vocals. I process all my vocals in pretty much the same way. After I record them, and create a vocal comp. After I do my vocal comp, I EQ my vocals and then compress them. Well, I pitch correct before I do those things. Then I render them, send them to Ableton to DS them, because I DS in Ableton. I will make a video for that at some point. And then I throw them back into FL Studio to do more fun effects stuff. So, baby, vocals on this song. I'm at my wit's end. Vocals are pretty clean, not doing anything too daring here. Because, baby, I've tried every single thing I can. So we've got that short slap back delay, kind of a megaphone sound, uh, if you will. I EQ my slap delay in this manner, and then I'm actually stereoizing it just to give it some more width. Because, baby... I honestly don't know where the original EQ for the vocals is, but after I EQ'd it and rendered it, I EQ'd it again, like this. I don't really know. Like, there are rules of thumb, you know, with this stuff, but like, uh, I was just feeling it out, because the vocals were sounding kind of dead. I boosted, you know, the 100, 200 range, and then I, I felt like they needed more, more high mids, just to kind of cut through the mix. I've tried every single thing I can. And uh, I do really like my vocals to be easily decipherable. I like them to sit on top of everything. I like them, I like them to be crystal clear. So that guides a lot of my decisions mixing vocals. Maybe I'm cruel. I automate the, the slap delay. It turns off for the verses so it gets like real intimate. You know, whereas on the choruses, you got that like big room sound. No. But when you come to the verse, Maybe reverb's I'm gone, cool. delay's gone, it really brings it in. And selfish too. Which is uh, a good feeling, that's what you want. Um, I, I'm not talking about the background vocals. Let me let me just show you what they're doing. But now I'm speechless and I find Yeah, nothing crazy for background vocals. They're just, background vocals should be buried in the mix. There's, you know, there's no rules with music, but like it's just a, a basic mixing rule of thumb. You gotta, you kinda want the, the background vocals to be under the lead vocals. Maybe I'm cruel, insensitive and selfish too. See, it is me. Major third, minor third, third-ish harmony for certain licks here. No more vacant apologies. You know, just selectively emphasizing certain phrases. This, way look, it's this whole whole line gets a harmony because I want you to fucking listen to it. I create fake harmonies sometimes when I just don't want to record anymore. I will duplicate the lead vocals and uh, tune them to uh, a, a harmony, some interval. In this case, it's like another third or a fifth or something. Once you listen to it by itself, there's like some crazy flange or something. Um, yeah, very robotic sounding um, and super quiet. 
relative to the mix and most of the instruments, but it's just present enough to to just add some, you know, drama to to these lines. Play those in isolation. Talk to death. I'll make this as clear as I can for you. Yeah, gets the job fucking done. That's how I roll. I know <clears throat> you don't understand. I've got my little echoes here, my call and response thing. I'm a very convoluted man. That's pretty much it for the vocals. Nothing crazy to talk about. I want to bring up the fact that I actually, I recorded the song and released it in 2018. And for my new album, Living the Pipe Dream, I remastered it. I did more than remastered it. The biggest change was, was tracking real bass on it. Uh, and I'll get to that shortly. This mix is not the mix that is, you know, publicly available as of right now. Because the album isn't out yet. It, it's June today, the day I record this. But by the time I release this, the album will be out, so that was pointless. Let's talk about the drums. I, I make fake drums. They're fake. I use samples, and I, I draw my drums with my mouse pad and a clicker button. Yeah, I'm using... I've acquired drum samples from many different places over the like 10, 12 years that I've been making music. I'm like, I couldn't even tell you where I got these. This is some random vinyl drum pack that comprises most of the, most of the drum samples for the song. Now I'm not trying to like fool anybody into thinking that I played with a real kit. I'm at my wit's end. Got some good old snaps there. Sometimes you just gotta let loose. If you're making fake drums, but you want them to kind of occupy the role of a real drum set, you want to mix it properly. And um, you, you wouldn't mix it like you mix drums on a dance track, necessarily. You gotta use reverb creatively to, like, put space in it. You have to put your fake drum kit in a fake room. I've got nothing left to say to you. No. A classic artificial cartoon drum fill. I've been trying to learn learn drums just so I can be a little more empathetic when I write these drum parts. For Cliff, my drummer. Just gotta learn them. Just gotta learn the impossible shit that I do. And uh, as I mentioned before, I don't ask him to. To my credit, I tell him to do whatever sounds good. But. He's a beast and just tries to uh, recreate exactly what I do with my computer, which is inhuman. Oh, no, baby. Literally everything is by hand. I'm not using any drum samples or break beat samples. Not that I'm like opposed to. I'm like very, I'm very particular about, about my drum fills. I love drum, I feel like you can do so much with a tasteful fill. And for this song in particular, I was, I was like, Gleaning inspiration from Fleetwood Mac, uh, specifically Dreams, um, of course, because that that song is full of just really, really tasteful, but like also somehow melancholy drum fills. If I were to personify the drums in Dreams by Fleetwood Mac, I'd call them tasteful yet melancholy. Oh boy. Mm. Let's keep going. Fuck. Into the sploosh J. If you look closely, exhibit Q. This is into the sploosh J. I get it, because it's a it's like this lead-in into the real angst of the bridge. Um, real quick, if I can find the main drum track, I do this with most with, with most of my drums on the album. I add this 
uh, sound toys plug in this effect called radiator it's like an amp simulator distortion thing it goes on the drum bus before the compression it just adds this dirt to it if you take it off it makes the drums too clean and you don't want it to be too clean you know how music is it's got to be it's got to be dirty that is the drums in a newt shell. Uh, the bass used to be a synth, but um, for the new version of this song for the album, it is bass guitar, because I have since learned how to play bass. I go direct in with my bass to just like my guitar, compressing the shit out of it naturally. I'm using a guitar rig preset on the bass. Uh, just to make it a little more colorful. Oh, weird. That sounds bizarre. I don't know. I don't know what's happening there. I think I'm doing some something stupid with the EQ. Yeah, look, what the fuck am I doing here? I'm... L These are two consecutive instances of, of EQ. First, the bass goes through this. And then it goes through this. I'm officially just making fun of myself because this is ridiculous. But it it doesn't sound whack. So how ridiculous is it really? Um, I, I guess I, I really like a little bit of crunch in my bass. It like would have made more sense to just put some very diluted distortion effect on it after the EQ, but instead I just tried to really, really force some of this 5-10k range stuff up there. And if you turn these off... Sounds like a completely different instrument, so... I do, I put some slap back delay on my bass to, you know, make it a little more physical just like the drums. There was a time where I, I thought putting effects on bass was sacrilegious. I don't know why I thought that, I really don't, but I'm, I'm over it. Yeah, the bass, bass line for the song is pretty just in the pocket. It's mostly doubling what the guitar is doing. Changes up slightly for the chorus. Only one more thing really happens here. At this point, I'm aggressively plucking. I love a good bass slide. I adopt less a less staccato playing method for this outro instrumental. That's it for the bass. Let's look at the synths. Synths are where it all goes down. That's where the magic happens. Couple things here. I'm using, it's gotta be LD Chillin' House Lounge. It is Chillin' House Lounge. The only Nexus preset that I still use. Um, it makes an appearance on almost every song on the album. I challenge you to pick it out. It sounds like this. That's it. Nexus is a dated synth that I didn't even realize was still around. I just learned recently that Nexus 3 is out. This is Nexus 2, which came out, I don't know, eight years ago or something. I've had it for a very long time, but uh, that's really that's adding a, some spooks to this to this song in the synth category, along with one of my favorite FL synths, Sakura. This big ol' synth walk up is comprised of three things: a uh, chillin' house lounge, of course. Uh, I'm using three X OSC or three oscillators. It's a vintage ass FL synth. It's about as simple as it comes. It's just three waveforms. 
And finally, this is perhaps the second most prominent sound I use. This thing, let me just maximize this for God's sake. This is a sound from, it's like, okay, so PCs, uh, or not PCs, but, but Windows comes, or maybe it is PCs, it comes with this like built-in sound card thing that allows it to play MIDI files. Um, it's a wavetable synth, and I can't remember what it's called. It's like Microsoft GS wavetable synth or something. It's full of the most cheesy, but like if you were raised by the internet like me in the early 2000s, cheesy but nostalgic sounds. Kind of sounds like RuneScape music. I'm using the orchestral harp patch, but like this is everything that it comes with. If you have a PC with Windows installed on it, then you have all of this. That's the Tim Panning, it sounds ridiculous. And right now, there's a ton of reverb and delay on it, which makes it sound better than it really is. I mean, these sounds completely dry are super cheesy. Xylophone. It's very fun, though. And the harp is my favorite sound that comes out of it, and I use it a ton. Just as, like, texture on a lot of songs. And it appears more in this song. Yeah, so it's almost like a call and response thing going on in, in the verses with the synths. Baby. Wait, no. Call and response is not the right way to describe it. It kind of walks along with the vocal melody. Baby, I've tried every single thing I can. I've worn my vocal cords thin. I'm not describing it very well. Um, this, I believe, is Omnisphere. I'm layering Omnisphere, which is an extremely, you know, sophisticated CPU intensive, like very taxing synth. I'm layering Omnisphere with the cheesy built-in Microsoft wavetable synth, like polar opposites, but I'm making them fit together. It just, I love the way it sounds. All the synths in this song are just drenched in reverb and detuned delay to just add some kind of sad, ominous, spooky stuff. The song came out originally like in October. Our release show for it was like, right before Halloween, so it's kind of Halloween themed. It's not a Halloween song. It's not like I did it for Halloween, but it does kind of have Halloween vibes. Because I am a psychopath, you can barely, you really can't hear it. But I, at the beginning of the song, I was like, I want to put the sound of a woman crying and sobbing in it, uh, but just really, 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 really low. I forgot that was in there. I have issues. Oh no. Ugh, I feel gross for having done that. No one would have even known. No one has to know uh, if I edit this out of the video. But I... you'll see. Second verse just has a little more... a little more happening in it. Very subtle, but just like... This breathy omnisphere patch that you're hearing. Usually in the second verse, the third verse of any song, I just I have to add something. You always gotta add something, or, or change it up. Something new and um, just distinct, something to distinguish it from the other verses. I feel like that's just like a, like a commercial songwriting tip, but also something just like an instinctual in us when we listen to music. We notice, maybe subconsciously, it like moves the song along. So coming in on the second chorus, uh, this isn't really a synth. I rarely add anything even remotely orchestral, but uh, for this song, it felt very fitting to add some warped uh, harpsichord on it. Is it even harpsichord? I don't think it is. I think it's another. Yeah, it's another uh, Microsoft synth 
patch. It's acoustic guitar as interpreted by some Microsoft sound designer, but the way I'm using it, it sounds kind of like a harpsichord. And for the outro, all these synths just kind of back up this guitar, you know, riff, riff, refrain that you hear throughout the whole song. You hear it this way. Yeah, I think I've really covered the gist of the synths. Same with, with, I mean, pads are synths. I don't know why I'm separating these. I break up all my tracks into the same categories, you know, vocals, drums, bass, synths, pads, guitar. I just make everything fit in those categories. So take, take my organization with several grains, a fistful of salt. But um, yeah, the pads are super important in this song because they just add so much atmosphere. I'm using Sakura again. And it's got like this, this like detuned kind of warped reverb engine built into it. So cool. And then I'm using Omnisphere patches for, or just a patch as another pad. Omnisphere, there's one thing that it really excels at. It is pads. It excels at many things, but it, it crushes pads. I use it mostly for pads. They're beautiful all by themselves. They add so much. There's the sound that you can barely hear. That's another Omnisphere patch. It's the sound of all these men doing like vocal warm-ups. The way I put a, bu a bunch of delay on it and it just sounds like a ton of voices just like all talking at once in your ear. It's just like a very anxiety inducing thing and this song is largely about anxiety. It's about a lot of things but I mean anxiety is a big element concerning the uh, factors that went into the events that created this song. So. Spooky. I like to be spooky. Spooks of it. Spooks of what, what keep, they keep you young. All that's really left is the guitar, which is huge for this song. I have one layer of guitar. This one. That is just like mimicking what the bass is doing. This exists because originally there was no bass guitar in this song, so I was using real guitar to double the bass to make it sound more realistic, sound more organic. But then I recorded actual bass guitar and it was kind of redundant, but I left it in because it still it adds some more stank to it. There's this twinky guitar that's buried with a with a, a low pass filter here. It opens up very slowly. Baby. So this guitar riff is the song. This guitar riff is, is how I wrote the song, and this is how I play it. For the I'm verses, at my wits end. it's like the only thing. It's just that and, and my voice. I wanted to keep it clean and this is a song where I want you to listen to lyrics, but I always want you to listen to lyrics. So this song's no different than my other songs in that way. So this twang guitar that really steals the show in my opinion. As I'm sure I've already said, I, I go direct in for everything and I'm using guitar rig to get the sound. So for the choruses, I use two different takes, and one's panned hard right, one's panned left. Just to really let it sit on the throne. The double takes and the panning and everything really uh, gives it real estate so you can hear it. I just really wanted it front and center, or perpendicular to the vocals. this little instrumental break here. Nothing, nothing super creative, but I'm using a low-pass filter to create this big build. Yeah, there's the choir men warming up sound effect just to kind of simulate a panic attack, which is 
what I'm trying to do here. This is in the pad category, but it's really more of a bass thing. I'm using 3x OSC to just create this. It sounds very video gamey by itself, but just to kind of turn up the heat here. Add some, add some beef to it. Here's a sultry lick. For the second verse, uh, yeah, a lot of stuff happens in the second verse. It didn't happen in the first verse. The guitars come in to join with the synths again. Just cultivate the sense of impending doom. You're just this feeling like something's about to fucking go down. This is a very cool moment. just this like you know I if you when you hit that note you gotta recoil yeah you get it you know what's up yeah it's uh, everything just kind of grows more restless as the song goes on the guitar picks up for the second chorus even more It, it does more doubling with right there. It does more, you know, stuff with the synths. You know, syncing up with the synths. And here's this big bridge here. Kind of just carries on like that. Everything starts really chugging right about here. It's just this big, ridiculous, just about to throw down kind of building. If you ask me, this whole song, it's building up to this outro, this instrumental outro. It, it's comprised mostly of things that we've already heard, but it is my fa it's it's my favorite part of the song because it's just it's what the song is about. The song is about ceasing to talk, saving your breath. It's like there's nothing left to say, so just, you know, words can't describe the feeling, but this can. I feel like I say stuff is my favorite of all time a lot. I might, you know, contradict this. I probably said the solo in Used to Feel Good is one of my favorites. It is one of my favorites. This is also one of my favorite solos. It was the only way to end this song. The only way to end this song was with this melancholy solo that just trails off. Yeah, that's it. I think that's all I got. But there's of course more. I'm I'm skimming the surface in all of these videos because like months went into this song. The work that goes into finalizing it is eclipses the work that goes into like making a demo or something. I put a lot of thought into like every little thing here. As always, if there's something you saw or something I glossed over in this song that you're curious about, or you want to know how I did something that I didn't cover, just ask, let me know. And I am happy to bend your ear for as long as you'll let me. Yeah, happy to share what I can. I had to grind. I don't want to say to get where I am because I'm not like anywhere, but like to become satisfied with the way my own stuff sounds. Everything I do is probably a product of trial and error. That's enough out of me. Hope you learned something or had a good time watching this video. I'll talk to you later. See ya.